Hi, this lesson is on multiplying decimals by whole numbers. It comes from the standard MAFS, which is Florida, Math Florida Standard 6.NS.2.3. Um, we're going to be working on fluently multiplying multi-digit numbers using the standard algorithm for each operation um, in this video lesson. So a reminder of things that you're going to need is you need your composition notebook out, you also need a sharpened pencil, and you need to remember to copy down notes, especially when I tell you to uh, do so. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Open up your composition notebooks to the next available two pages as shown in the picture here. We're going to be writing on the left side of your composition notebook first, and we're always going to title your, um, your paper. So be sure at the very top you're going to title How to Multiply Decimals by Whole Numbers. Now remember along the way you're going to need to pause your video so that you can um, copy down the notes that I'm listing here on this paper. So we're going to start with step one. When we're multiplying decimals by whole numbers, we're going to multiply like normal. Basically, what I mean by that is we're going to pretend that the decimal point is not there. Step two, once we've multiplied, we're going to count the number of dec decimal places in the problem. That means we're going to count every digit that comes after the decimal. Step three, we're going to place the decimal in the product. Now remember, the product is the answer. So we're going to place the decimal in the product the same number of places from the right as in the factors. All right, so let's go ahead and put this to work so you can see exactly how it works out. Now we're going to be writing on the right-hand side of your composition notebook as shown in um, the pictures that you see on your screen in front of you. So in this first example here, we have 27 times 5 tenths. So go ahead and take a moment to write that down. What I would like for you to do is to go ahead and multiply this number as you normally would. So you see where that decimal point is? Just pretend it's not there and just multiply this guy like normal. So when we multiply it like normal, we're going to get 135. Now, the second step says to count all the decimal places that are in your um, factors. Now, the two factors here are 27 and 5 tenths. So those are our two factors. Those are the numbers that we're multiplying there. So I'm going to focus on the 5 tenths. Now, on this 5 tenths here, it has a decimal, and you can see the decimal right over here. There's your decimal point. And we want to count all the digits that come after that decimal point, which means like how many numbers come after this decimal? Well, there's only one, one spot. So this has one decimal spot on this one. So what you're going to do is, this is going on to step three, I like to start my pencil over here at the end where I put this pink dot. And since this is a one right here, which means I have one decimal spot in my problem, I'm going to, um, in my product, which is the answer, I'm going to go in just one spot from the right. So I'm traveling from right to left and you can see the direction that I did that with my arrow and I'll show you again. So I went one spot and I only went one spot because in my problem I only had one decimal with one number that came after it. So now my decimal is going to go right there between the three and the five. So the answer to this problem is 13 and five tenths and that's it. So let's try this next example here. On this one, we have 12 and 4 tenths times 7. Now, um, in this example here, compared to the first one, the decimal is the number that's on the top. It doesn't really matter when you're multiplying which number you put on the top or the bottom, but what a good rule of thumb is, I like to put the number that takes up the most amount of space on the top because multiplying in the other direction just kind of makes it weird. So if I had multiplied it like this, that just kind of looks funky. So we really don't want to do that. So I'm going to take that part away. So go ahead and multiply 12 and 4 tenths times 7. Pretend the decimal point is not there. So here you can see that I went ahead and did that. I got 868. Now remember, that's not my final answer. I have to check my um, 
problem and look for my decimals. There's one right over here with one number that comes after it. So there's one decimal spot. Therefore, in my answer, I'm going to go in just one spot only. So therefore, my decimal is going to go between the 6 and the 8. And my final answer is 86 and 8 tenths. Let's go ahead and try one last example. On this one, we have 5 and 62 hundredths times 8. So go ahead and pause your video and um, work this problem out. So here I got 4,496. So I need to look at my problem and find my decimal, which is between the 5 and the 6 right over here. There are two numbers this time that come after that decimal point. So that means there's two decimal spots. So in my answer, I'm going to start my pencil right here where my green mark is, and I'm going to go in two spots, one, two. So notice how I kind of bounced in. So my decimal point is going to go between the 4 and the 9, giving me a final answer of 44 and 96 hundredths. Now I know I said that this was going to be our last example. I made a mistake. We're going to do one more because I want to show you one where we're multiplying by a double digit, which does not change any part of the problem whatsoever. So let's do 17 and 63 hundredths times 15. So we'll make it kind of easy. Go ahead and pause the video and give this guy a try. And I want you to go all the way to the end until you can place the decimal point. So after you've worked out the problem, if you um, did your multiplication correctly, you got 26445, which is 26,445 down at the bottom. So I'm going to look at my problem. I'm going to look, locate my decimal, which is right over here, with two numbers that come after it. Therefore, in my answer, I'm going to swoop in two times, put my decimal right here between the fours. So your final answer on this problem is 264 and 45 hundredths. Okay, so now you're probably wondering what you're going to do now. Now, what I want you guys to do is, and this is required, you need to take the self quiz. When you were on Canvas, to get to this video, you clicked on the video link for multiplying um, decimals by whole numbers. Directly underneath that one, one little spot below that, it'll say required self quiz, and then it'll also say multiplying decimals by whole numbers. You might not see that part unless if you take your mouse and hover over it if you're on the computer. So you do need to take that. It's a five question self quiz. When you click submit, it will automatically um, give you your answers and how well you did on this quiz. So if you're finding that you're struggling and that you got a lot of the questions wrong, when you come back into class tomorrow, or the next day, you need to let me know um, so we can sit down and get you some assistance or help on what you need to do. Now, this lesson will be a lot easier if you know your multiplication facts. If you don't know your multiplication facts, I can't help you a whole lot with that. That's something you're going to have to learn and memorize. Um, but what I can help you with is on knowing where to place the decimal points. And if you still need some assistance on um, the actual multiplication algorithm, like how to actually multiply numbers um, and listen them out. All right, you guys, that's it for now, and we will see you back in class.